Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the evening. Today is August 14, 7 p.m. of 2017. Can I have a roll call, please? Basil? Here. Meyer? Here. Krause? Here. Missouri? Here. Carlos? Here. Whalen? Here. We have the minutes of the July 14th meeting. Any changes, corrections? If not, is there a motion? So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any questions in the motion? Okay. Roll call. Basil? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Krause? Yes. 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 For the audience that wishes to do us the board? Yeah. Okay, there. If not, we have the Beautification Commission trustee cover. Oh, trustee cover? <laughs> okay. On time. So, I think you might do another one. Sure. Um, beautification. Last week we spent two days down at um, Depot Park and a Women's Welfare Park <coughs> did a massive cleanup, uh, lifting trees, uh, dropping a couple trees, pulling out a bunch of bushes, and bringing all of the shrubbery around the berms down to just about nothing. And I believe they're going to just start doing the flowers that come up annually. Uh, so maintenance on that should be a lot less. And we marked off uh, two areas for benches that will be one bench, uh, um, memorial bench for Paul Loman will be. Probably install within the next month and a week. Um, Fourth of July Commission Trustee Mayor. Uh, I do not have all the numbers in yet. I was working on the budget yesterday. We've still got bills pouring in. Um, it looks like we will just barely end the year in the black this year. Just barely, but too soon to tell. And there are still some outstanding bills that you know, could turn that. So. You Commission Trustee Reserve. Okay, um, so we had the Deep River Water Park event, and it was a success. Um, we had 474 residents register, and out of that, 382 attended. Um, so we consider that a success. Um, the next meeting, well, each meeting is always the third Wednesday of the month here at the Village Hall at 7.30 p.m., which should be this week, the 16th. That's all I have to report. Thank you, River Hall, Trustee David. Uh, the Ribbon of Hope, uh, three benches have been installed. Uh, the other five are being put together, uh, painted at this time. So I would imagine the next couple of weeks all the benches will be installed. And the bricks are going out for engraving soon. So uh, still looking at fall to dedicate it. The Star Preservation Trustee Will. Yeah, we're still celebrating our uh, founding father's 200th birthday all year. Uh, we handed out cake at the uh, Summerfest, which was seemed like it was a pretty good hit. Um, we ended up giving 200 pieces. Uh, we were done like at 2.15, I think it was. So they went pretty quickly. So uh, it went well. I think we got the word out, too. We passed out business cards, uh, you know, just explaining to people that we do have a museum. We do have a, you know... A depot down downtown to come and visit. Uh, we were also trying to recruit for the commission, you know. So, but it was a good time. Um, I think it was just uh, good to let people know that, um, you know, we do have a history. We do, you know, who's the founding father, and uh, he was supposed to show up around five o'clock. He never showed up. So, uh, but other than that, it was a great, great success. Uh, we have postponed our meeting from this Wednesday till next Wednesday. Uh, so if anybody's interested, uh, you can attend our meeting next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Is that here, Scott? Or That's at the depot. Sign should be complete soon also. So buddy's going to have to install the sign. And on the welcome bags that the chamber hands out, I yes. think I just handed out the last brochure about the depot. So I don't know if you have any kind of brochure to make up that I can put in the welcome bag. I'll tell people about the depot. Okay. Thank okay. you, Trustee Beatle. Um, Treasurer's report, Donna. 
Um, the enclosed uh, treasurer's report <coughs> in your packet. The the balance of the um, of the village accounts at the end of July, one million eight hundred fifty one thousand three hundred and one dollars. The balance of the commission accounts at the end of July, two hundred eleven thousand three hundred seventy two. Um, the balance of all of the accounts together, two million sixty two thousand six hundred thirty seven. Seventy-three. <coughs> Sorry. The general account, the balance, seven hundred ninety thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars. <coughs> As you can see, with the the general, we're back on track uh, to where we should be. Last time there was. A question about the general account being down, and that uh, was just um, the June balance. <coughs> the June balance in 2016 was extremely high, um, out of the ordinary. So that's back down. The commission accounts. Um, the non-AP payments total three hundred forty-five thousand. Uh, you can see most of the activity was, of course, Fourth of July, and that ends that report. Okay. Uh, I'd like to consider a motion approving the treasurer's report mm -hmm. and the report of financial activity for the prior month. The motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any questions? The motion. I got a question. In the commission bills, um, there was two decent sized checks for contract labor park maintenance. When did that start? One is to Patty Sun Law for $2,400, another one is a name I don't recognize for $850. I can answer, I can start on that. Um, that was work that was approved by 4th of July Commission Chairman. So those invoices showed up at Village Hall after the work was completed. It was park labor and there was a lot of questioning at Village Hall about that as to where they came from. Apparently our park worker that we usually have, that we pay money to, had gotten a job somewhere else. So the way it was explained to me is that they hired these people to take care of the work that he was unable to do because he was not available this year. So 3,250 that, and again, this stuff came in, it was approved by the chairman, sitting in the box to be paid before, you know. What, what did the prior uh, time about Bill do the work, right? Pardon? The Bill will do the work, is that what we're A Bill usually does, right? What did he get paid for? He the has year? not been gotten, normally it's $7,000 for him. For the year, right? For the year. That invoice has not yet been paid. No, I'm, I'm more alluding to the fact that we paid two people $3,250 for Yep. How many weeks? Two, four, two weeks of the work? Yep. We normally pay somebody seven thousand dollars for one year. Per year. This was approved by one person. Yep. The, what was the rate? That I do not know. <coughs> what was the rate? What was their hourly rate? What, what there was nothing specified, no, nothing specified on that can, can I just a general question? What did they do? Part work? I mean, so you clean up leaves? Did they do no, anything? They, they were marching around the trees. Any repair work? works? They had, they had bricks that were donated. That was the landscaping barrier around the base of the trees for the mulch. That was supposed to have been done, so the bricks were sitting there. When that job was done, then the other individual became a helper to Kenny Bobowski, who was both, who was on the commission and volunteering his time to do electrical work and so on and so forth. So he was digging ditches, and they were doing work that Bill would normally do during that time, yes, which include cleaning up gutters, uh, preparing to park for the 4th of July celebration, yes. So, when, when did they, when did we employ them? Before the 4th of July, I don't remember what date it was. Are they still employed by us? No. No, when Bill, Bill came back then, once Bill came back, it was done over the discussion that I had with the chairman, who, like Marcy said, there's been a lot of lengthy discussion, a lot of argument 
arguments over with the chairman of that commission, where bottom line is in his mind he had the line item that was going to come out of it. Now the commission has not met yet to where that line item is coming from. In my mind, as far as I was concerned, that if in fact that money reached their seven thousand dollar maximum by the fourth of July, then as far as I'm concerned, the park work is done by anybody being paid. Because that will happen on September first, the way the month the public works went. That's the indication, but because he, apparently Fourth of July is not going to pay us the full seven thousand. Well, right. that was the question I had, and I have yet to pay the bill for the seven thousand dollars because I questioned that. I says I was told that this thirty-two fifty came out of the seven thousand, and then I suddenly got an invoice for seven thousand for the park worker. I says no, thirty-two fifty was coming out of the seven thousand. They still have to have a meeting to explain. In his mind, when I talked to him, I said, as far as I'm concerned, you're done at seven grand. You're over. You spent your what? Okay. And it's in the case, and it was like where. For instance, like the department has sometimes, if they still spend three thousand dollars on a light item, then they take that three thousand and move it into that light item. He has that in his mind. He has yet to have a meeting to explain it. We just called that meeting. And he's going to be over budget with that seven thousand. Okay. Again, he's got to explain it. I that. Okay. <coughs> My question is: It says contract labor park maintenance. One was. My first question is, was this offered to our public works employees? No. No, I don't think it. If we have work that needs to be done at the park, where we hire an employee that's hired, went through an application process, and is an employee of the village to do that, why would we contract something out rather than offering it to our existing employees, whether it be an overtime thing or something like that. What was proposed, what, what has happened in the past, and again, a lot of things have transpired this time where I doubt very much that this is going to happen again. In the past, they would hire individuals like to pick up garbage during the 4th. They would hire individuals would help us and so on and so forth. Which and is like, in there. Yeah, I don't, and like at $10 an hour. When this was proposed, that's what I had pictured in my mind. And then next thing you know, we were presented the bill, and Marcy and I are both having anxiety attacks over this because it was somehow they came to a figure. And because that's that's my question is why well, I, I want to know how many hours were worked and what was the rate of pay? Was this bid out at all? Or did they just no? Again, the, the Fourth of July Commission used to hire, and they still do hire individuals like kids and that to help us during the Fourth of July celebration, just like Bill and Joe Cook. Are doing the grass okay so when this was proposed in my mind it was no different than that but then it got out of control there, there's a big and, difference and though Bill and Joe are paid by the village I, these bikes were not paid by the village I'm not how were they not paid by the village paid by they were paid by 4th of July directly to them it didn't run through the village's payroll system it's running through our bills right now well yeah that I need to approve you're approving a 4th of July bill <laughs> that you already paid to them 60 days ago yeah, it's been paid. I, mean, I, I understand that. But I still have a question as to, okay, for one person to to rack up twenty four hundred dollars, which I believe Bill is was the max, right? Because he has three years. It's twelve dollars an hour. It, but he has three years of service of doing this for us continually. At twenty four hundred dollars divided by thirteen dollars an hour, it's one hundred eighty four hours. I think they were there maybe three weeks total. I think, not 100% sure. On a 40 hour work week, that's still only 120 hours. No. What was their rate of pay? I don't know. That was something that they agreed to. He has to explain. In my mind, it wasn't there. We figured out something like $20 an hour. Oh, yeah, it's it's, it's really, really not, it's really not fair to Bill and Joe that are working down there for Whoa, $20. This has all been hashed with him. I've already, believe me, I've already covered it. Now he's going to have to have his meeting and he's going to have to say where this money is coming from out of their budget. I'm not worried about where it's coming from. What I, what I, where, where I have an issue. Protocols. Where I have an issue is how does somebody have the right, if it was $20 an hour, which that'd still be 120 hours, which would be three weeks straight or 40 hours a week. I, I, I find that hard to believe that doing some, spreading some mulch and laying a couple bricks is that kind of hourly, that, that number of hours. But where's the insult to our public works crew? We don't disagree with you. Our public works crew, we got guys that work here full time, support families on less than that. John, we've had, an hour. we've had that discussion with them. 
we've had the discussion with him, not to mention the Public Works Department. We had we had the question over the two parks employees that are down there. Who who were they insured under? They were. Under. So how are they not an employee? They weren't insured. They weren't insured because it went through the Fourth of July Commission. So they weren't a contract in them. That's the way the invoice was written up. No, just like Marcy had a question. They weren't covering the workman's comp because we didn't pay. Yeah, I said they certificates and liability, workman's comp, where was all this stuff? And then, like, Marcy pointed out that, no, I lost my train of thought. There's some well, other point we made. And, you know, I, I would question, and probably beyond the scope of this, I don't really believe that any commission president, any head of a commission, should have the right to hire when it's something that involves the village. Because nobody, let's say there's complete innocence involved, and nobody knows what the rules are as far as certificates of liability, as far as workers' comp, as far as prevailing wage. That stuff should never go through a commission. No commission sh commissioner should have that amount of authority to be able to do that. We got a guy like Kenny Bobowski that dedicates how many hours volunteer that we don't even pay. We yeah. come, we we find thirty two fifty to throw these people. Yeah. Daddy's son in law and this Tom Stibernick. That discussion's been had with him too. So how does how does this happen? I mean, could this? I mean, theoretically, this can happen with any bill, anybody he wants what? to hire for everything. He Look. wants to just hire anybody for anything, can he? No. No, can't happen in the future. Because, like I said, I sat down with him. I've had many arguments with him. I've had but many we're, discussions we're, with Marcy. We're here today to approve bills that have already been paid. So what if all of us said no? Okay, because these individuals already did the work. That's why we approved the payment of that. It's not fair to them. And that was my only issue. By the time it came to Village Hall, this the work is done. It, it has been approved and guaranteed by somebody that was, you know, a, a, a commissioner of the village. Not in a position to say yes, or they were. Pardon? So this person does have the authority. Uh, who are we talking about? The chairman of the 4th of July? Yeah. So he does have the authority to do this. Did at that point, apparently. The commission? Like well, I mean, it, it's, yeah. I understand what you're saying, but no. it's sort of a yes or no question. It's not a maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, does he or does he not have authority to do this? As of now, no. But he did he when did. this happened. He has in the past. Yes. There's no checks and balances for any of this? Uh, you could run all these bills through the village's system. These are offline bills. They're being paid before the village approves them. So you have no choice. It, it, the bill's been paid. If you say no, I don't know what you do. But everybody on this fourth night commission is appointed by the village, correct? That's correct. That's correct. I, I got another question. Then. If I'm not. If, I just, if, I address if I'm not mistaken, I believe there was not a quorum at the night that this was going to come up prior to it. If I remember right, we canceled the meeting because there was no quorum and it didn't come up that night. Which is another structural issue that we can address at another time, but trying to get a quorum of 20 people is ridiculous. It needs to have a board of about seven people to approve this stuff, but that seems that's a you know, story for another day. But, but now, Bingo Steam Electronics, did we bid that out? What's that? The well, what, the what was involved? I mean, I saw two TVs yeah, out there. What else? The software for the for the laptop and the two screens and the wire. What is software? And the cost. If you want to see, I've actually got the invoice. That one didn't disturb me as much as the workers did looking over it. Well, but I'm, what I'm saying yeah, is, is, is this person who worked on village property? Do they have insurance? Were they bought it? It was a company. Do they have a contractor license. It was a company. It was an actual. That's what I'm saying. Company. Yeah. Yeah. Does this person or company, whatever, mm -hmm. do they have a contractor license? Do they have insurance? Do they approve workman's comp insurance? They're working up inside of the pavilion or the bingo stand. They fall off the ladder. What happens? Yeah, the same would be true with the sound guy, I guess. Was there productions? I mean, it was a sound guy down here that we contract to provide. Speakers, lights, smoke. You don't Same ever thing. check for any of that? I have to say, when it comes to vendors, anybody who serves food, I used to make them do a certificate of liability insurance for the village in case of food poisoning and things like that. But they all had to provide it. So, with the sound system, that person is, that, that's the board you're talking about outside of the fence, right? That does the sound. Yeah. But what was involved in this bingo scheme? To two video screens, the wiring. Purchase of the two video screens and the wire, and then the mounting of them. We didn't, we didn't check for any insurance on this person. It's going to be climbing ladders on our property. 
but truthfully, like like Bobby, it never even occurred to us as far no. as the even wizard projections for the Fourth of July. They don't provide us with a certificate of insurance. They stay on the ground. I mean, they're they're walking. Uh, we we should still require it absolutely, <laughs> but I mean, this would be a red flag to me that if somebody's going to be hanging forty inch TVs in the bingo stand where they were. Well, it's not be. something you're doing off the ground. My my guess is Kenny probably hung them because we had to take them up and down every day. They didn't stay up there. Back when it rained, we had to take them down. We ran over there to take them down. Go back to Kenny hang them out. I, I couldn't tell you, John. I don't know. Go back to Wizard Productions. You probably make a very good point there. That's the way we have done it all from day one. We've never required them to have a certificate of insurance, which you're probably right. It's very similar. Should be covered underneath our park rules that we're going to talk about tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, why is the Fourth of July any different than? Yeah. I mean, if somebody's going to be doing work. I mean, I, I think with the park rental or lease, I don't foresee anybody working on our right. buildings or right. our property. I mean, to me, that's they were working on the physical stand. I mean, that's. I, mean, I guess if somebody rents it out. Beer tent or something, and had a DJ electronics or lights or something. Oh, yeah. It'd be the yeah. same thing. And, and my big thing so is with this, this, this. this contract labor park maintenance. That I, that I'm i going to say it, and, and I'll drop it after that. I think it's a slap in the face to anybody, the two guys that have worked down there for the past two, three years, and I think it's a slap in the face to our entire public works department that somebody went on their own and contracted these two people to do work that we have people that already work for us are capable of doing. First of all, I agree with you 100% with everything except one exception. The work that would have been done by their own paperwork with, from public works that would have been taken out of their day on a daily basis. This is work that something extra that we all do. That, that could have been paid to the village to cover them on overtime on a Saturday to come in and do that very easily. The 4th of July Commission we could have worked our public works employee, which they probably could have got what was done down there in one day as a crew and said, guys, come in for a Saturday at time and a half. We submit the bill, what it cost us for our public works crew to be out there for the day. And the 4th of July commission could have reimbursed the village the cost. Okay, that's a good point. So you said this can't happen again. What, what's changed? I mean, did rules change? Did we're still going to tell them we're not doing this. We're yeah, doing I told them. I mean, it's, it's not fair that people get work down there not to pay them. In all rights, it shouldn't have been paid. But it's not fair to the workers that did the work to not get paid. If they were of the understanding, they were going to be paid. If you're an employee, you have to be signed up on the village's payroll system and have workman's comp coverage. The Fourth of July Commission should not be allowed to hire. And the chairman didn't know this? Yeah. When this was first started, there was past practice of hiring like people to do garbage and people to help us in the park, like Bill and Joe. Like now with kids, you know. Like Bill and Joe Cook. That's what it was. That's what I had envisioned when I learned about it. But then when I found out, I hit the ceiling, like others hit the ceiling, and said, "Where the hell did we come up with this?" Quote unquote. And then since that time, there's been many discussions with him over this, and he's I assured him he cannot do this again. And did he understand that? Better understand it, otherwise he's not going to be a commissioner anymore. That's the only recourse I have. Like I said, the money was already spent, the work was already done. It was after the fact. Anything else? So just basically moving forward for future reference, we will ensure that this doesn't happen again, basically. Okay. Um, <coughs> I'd like to consider a motion approving the treasurer's report and the report of financial. No, we did. We, did that. we already did it. Yeah, we did it. Oh, yeah. uh, we had a no, no. Second. We had a motion, motion and a second. A motion and a second. We did have a motion. This was discussion. Yeah. discussion. Yeah. Roll call. Wayland. Yes. Proposed. No. Missouri. <coughs> yes. Kraus. Yes. Meyer? Yes. Hazel? Yes. All right. The various reports uh, for the preceding month are enclosed for your review. And the approval of the bills for the prior month. We have three add-ons. Um, consultation, energy, um, 
for $10,025.39. Um, uh, Ernogenix uh, for $5,167.79. And I4. Nightcore for fifty-one dollars and twenty-one cents. Total of one hundred and seventy-four thousand three hundred and eighty-four dollars and seventy cents. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the bills for uh, one thousand seven hundred and I'm sorry, one hundred and seventy-four thousand three hundred and eighty-four dollars and seventy cents. Motion number four. Is there a second? Second. There's a second to the motion. Any question? Yeah, I got one. Just, uh, it, just moving forward in the future, we're, I'd like for DCAB Industries, uniform allowance and PPE for DPW stickers for you. It's, it's such a vague. What, what was this? Was this there PPE were, stuff? Was this public works? There were 25 invoices from DCAB in that pile. We had it. Yeah, they're all on the board. board. It was stickers for police. It was EMA. It was public works. We had uh, signs made there for, for the, the uh, downtown businesses open during construction. After construction the project. Okay. Bunch of, yeah. I didn't know if this was like one of those just like generic. It's like truly was not No, it was all broken down. Yeah. It wasn't one item. It was no, there were, it's one of the ones I looked through. There was pants. There was uh, signs for the businesses open. And everything. There was a EMA bill in there for, for a shirt. Yeah, there was one shirt in there for the EMA. Some pants. And then, you know, they did some signs for me for the historic yeah, commission. They did, they did some signs for cake signs. You're right. You know, the birthday some banner. Cake signs no, I just didn't think, because a lot of times the description of what the bill is for is, is generic. It stays in there <coughs> month after month. As you can see, there's no dollar amounts, but they're there. You know, and so, because that covers a wide variety, and you know if it was just a single one or what it was for. I have a question about the PDC meetings. Bob asked this, but I found another one. We're paying basically two for PCC. We're paying two hundred fifty dollars for a meeting for a secretary for minutes and a planner. Do you have any other committee that pays for their committee meetings? No. So why is this one different? Because it's the planning and zoning commission. It is a legal. It's a quasi legal body. Okay. That has to do things according to law. And these people are hired to keep you. Not a straight and narrow, I guess you could say. Um, I think you're referring to Tesca. Uh, Tesca prepares the finding of fact. And George is here tonight to speak to it if he thinks it's worth the 350 a meeting that we have Tesca here. He's on the planning and zoning commission. Um, and then we pay the recording secretary $100 because years past, and recently hasn't been so bad, but in years past, we have had upwards of 20 agenda items. People lined out the door for public hearings. And those get very elaborate. And those minutes used to be very extensive. Marcy, I think you were. I did it for about seven years. And um, back when there was a big building boom, and I literally I would spend sometimes a week on minutes, making sure that they were just right, so that I listening back to tapes to make sure we had everything we needed. There were people suing us, and um, it's not that way now. They're not quite that involved, but it used to take a lot of time. So, I mean, what's, I've looked at some of the minutes. These meetings aren't that long, mostly, correct? Now some are, some are. 30 minutes? 30? Uh, usually around an hour. He's back then, we're talking until 10 or 11 at night. They're going to get a lot longer pretty soon as we go into the long, uh, the uh, land use planning with CMAP. So, there are going to be some long meetings there. So, do you, if the village plan anything is worth it? I mean, because we're basically paying $3,000 a year for this commission to have these two people do this work. Well, you, you, you have to have the Tesco guy, the knowledge base there. We need that knowledge base. I mean, he's familiar with all the, the building codes and everything else, of, you know, throughout the area. So when we, when we start looking at what are we going to do with solar panels, he's the resource that you use for what is this community doing, what's that community doing, how does this affect all those types of things. Plus, whenever we need to make a ruling on something, he makes sure it's in compliance with our ordinances. So it's a very valuable uh, tool that he provides. Okay. Who else from the village is there then? Usually. Bob's there. You're welcome to come as well. 
Bob and Stacy's uh, always there. She's the liaison for the representative for that commission. I don't know if this was ordered. That's why we hand out the, the planning and zoning packet to the entire four at one time. A trustee sat at the table. Okay, then the village attorney came out with an opinion saying, no, it's not proper because none of us should really say or discuss anything at that level because it's the time for the planning and zoning to discuss it. So then what we did was, in order so that the village board would keep apprised of what was going on in the event that there was something that you did want to go here, we gave you that information ahead of time and then you would come to the meeting. And that is a fair question. If, if I'm paying the administrator to come to the meetings, why are we paying this test guy? I think that is a fair question. That's yes, fair. That's a, that's your question. How would you answer that, George? Repeat the question for me. If, 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 if he's paying the administrators to go to the PCC meetings, why are we also paying a plan? That's not a bad. Well, that's, 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 a, that's a valid question, but I, I think Bob would even acknowledge that when it comes to solar panels, Tesco is going to have more knowledge of what's going on oh, in the yeah. area than anybody else. And I'm also trying. And that's to not a light decision to make as to what you're going to allow people to put on their roofs. They're going to allow them on the ground. What do other villages do? What do they do in the in the business districts, the ag business areas? We don't have that knowledge base. Bob doesn't have that knowledge. Does base. all that stuff then to go to an attorney to review for ordinances and all that stuff? Yeah. After the finding of fact is produced by the. Uh, then it goes to Tim and Tim drafts the ordinance. In fact, tonight right. on Jason's uh, special use permit, you'll see a finding of fact attached to the ordinance that was prepared by Tesco that is required by law when you, when you adopt a special use for variance ordinance. So what I'm getting at is we still pay an attorney to go over and make sure his work is done properly. No. Yes. Uh, well, in a roundabout way, what you're doing with the attorney is he's putting what? We and the commission want what Tesco decide is the appropriate thing into the proper legalese. That's what lawyers do. I mean, unfortunately, they only speak their own language. So, you know, you have to have you have to have that when you do the ordinance. It's got to pass legal mustard. We're not capable of, of writing. Uh, no, I just want to make sure there's no redundancy. I mean, if we're paying basically one person to write it up and another person to rewrite it and check it, what's the point of having that middleman? No, I understand, but you understand that Tesco is the expert. The lawyer writes what he finds and puts it. Is this a company? I mean, I'm not I'm not yes. a I'm not familiar with this. Yes. Yeah. It's a planning consulting firm, and the village traditionally has always had a planning consulting firm. It was originally Van Tree, then it was Chuck Eckenstaller, then we went with Craig Ullinger. Um, I can't remember who was between Eckenstaller and Tesco. I can't remember, but there was another firm in between there. We've always had one. Not saying that's always right, but we always have. And then I just have one more question. What's the difference in cleaning between the police station and the village hall? Why is there a difference? Is it two different companies, two different people, and two different buildings? Okay. I think it's because one only bills for the one month's worth of cleaning the village hall. I think that's just for one month, and sometimes the police station, when it gets clean, they'll do the bill for the whole month. It will include a date from the previous month, you know, they, they bill this week, this week, this week, this week. One bill sometimes is for, the village hall is usually always just for the previous month, whereas the one over the police department sometimes just submits a little differently. So I think this one, this, the same, aren't they? No, because one's 300, one's 400, is that per month? I think this building is a little more than the police station. <coughs> yeah, this one's 400, police station. Your, your rate for the PD is different than... Yeah. Is, that the, is the PD going to be the same size or is this bigger? Is that why there's an extra 100 bucks a month? Bigger and dirtier. I think it's square footage here. Well, I don't care for how you answer it. The PD, I'm sure, you might be. Can't lie. Yeah, I was going to say, say I'm, I would think the police sure department was the case. <laughs> oh, I questioned this so once that, before. So the village hall is bigger than the police department? In square footage, yeah. The police station is really small. Let me get right down to it. I think there is a difference between individual office cleanings. The PD, I mean, the office cleanings, we don't do the desks, we don't do the windows. I think that's one thing they're doing at the Village Hall. Whoever has an office is cleaning their own office. At the PD, they do the floors and empty the garbage. They don't clean desks or the, the individual office windows. And I think that was the, the big difference. So the village hall gets clean better, just differently, more thorough. Yes, what? There's more carpet I mean, here. You got, you got a lot more carpet here. You got okay. floors there. You got carpet here. So 
we it's like comparing to apples to oranges. It is totally different. Uh, I, I got one question. That's in, this, this kind of falls along the same lines as my theories on our, our attorney and keeping him on retainer. Um, I disagreed with that in the last budget and we, we reviewed it and since then we were paying $2,500 a month retainer and since then I have not seen a bill over $1,700 where we're actually paying for the true services that we receive. Um, and I, I just quick look back through emails of planning and zoning minutes, and we've got meetings where, the, the, for example, the last minute, the minutes from the last meeting, the meeting started at 7 and it was adjourned at 721. We paid somebody $100 for 21 minutes. That's a heck of an hourly rate. This person is an employee of ours. Um, why are we not just paying them an overtime rate to do this. If not, why does not the planning and zoning have their own secretary? Just like every other commission and every other board. We don't pay Jeanette the commission. I'm sure that's something that's negotiated or a, a, a fee to be here. I'm sure that's something that's negotiated with her, you know, her contract for her to be here that she includes this in. But the other one is an hourly employee. We pay public works when they have to come in for hourly, for example, if the assistant superintendent, who's an hourly employee, um, were to come here for a meeting because he was needed on something or something like that, they would just receive their hourly rate at that time. Because as far as I'm concerned, is I mean, if we're paying them a fee, then that's to come here and be present at the meeting and take the minutes and then type those minutes and everything on their own time, correct? Yep. That's not done on village time here right. while they're working doing other things. So, I mean, I think if the time's there, they can type it here, just pay them the hourly of what it takes for them to be here. So the problem you have is it's a union employee, so you probably have to find somebody else. Because a union employee gets a minimum of two hours call out. So if we have them come out for the two hours, they would take that in comp time. Hey, Bob, I thought that was addressed in the contract, but that's it specifically was. included in the contract as part of the pay. It was. In the union but if contract. we're going to treat them as a call out. But I don't think we can. According to the union contract, yeah, I don't think we can. They would get point. two hours, and then, she, then the, the two hours would probably be taken. I thought that that was something separate. It is. It always separate. It has nothing to do with the union contract. But the union, in other words, you can't. It's not in the union contract at all. Correct. The union exempted the two positions. There was an MOU on that. Right. From that, from that, so it wouldn't be a that they can do other things outside of work for the contract. But okay, so then that's what I'm saying. We don't have to offer a hundred dollars. How? I mean, really, how can we justify a hundred dollars for 21 minutes of work? It's the 21 minutes plus whatever it took her to type the minutes up. Which a 21 minute meeting, no, does not take a lot of time. When you're sitting at a three hour meeting with public hearings. And they should be compensated more than a hundred. Exactly. I'm for that. that. that I'm, 20, I'm not saying. Yeah, it, absolutely. 21 minutes, you are correct. We have, I, I, I did the job for seven years. And I've been on the board for six years. <laughs> yeah. And I've attended a few planning and zoning meetings. I haven't seen one go over a half hour, 40 minutes. Well, they haven't been at too many. I've been to a few, George. You've been to a few, but not too many, John. I've we've been, had them. We've I've had, been, had them in the few. neighborhood of two hours. Mm -hmm. And, and, and when, what it was, especially, when, especially when you're discussing signs and when that, and fences, and those were not short meetings, my friend. And when those happen, they should be compensated. I believe what he's saying is that by bottom line is there should be a rate, and the rate should be based upon the amount of time that, that it here takes. It shouldn't just be a flat amount. I mean, I feel that I feel that same way about pending. If we're talking about that, I mean, where's the? I, I don't know. I just I feel on. Are the cleanings contracted? I mean, do we have a contract? We did those. No. We, if we had a contract, it was the company. The company was more expensive. Than this. Yeah. We can't do it. So probably next time we bring this up, it'll be during the next budget, which will be coming up. Do we have a contract with them? No. 
So that could be brought up at a committee meeting, correct? Probably. And make a change. I mean, if we're not legally obligated to any sort of contract, they would probably fund Scott's committee, public buildings and property. As far as the planning and zoning, or the no, planning? The planning. The planning. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just think about it before. Is there more? Is there any other questions? Or I forget. Yes. 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 Consider an ordinance granting a special use permit for two accessory structures on one zoning lot, 607 Penfield Street. The petitioner has a detached garage and wishes to construct a garden shed on the property. The zoning ordinance requires a special use permit for more than one detached accessory structure. <coughs> if the garage was attached, this would not be an issue. There are already several instances in the neighborhood where more than one accessory structure exists on one zoning lot, but the age of these structures make it appear that they were up long before we had a zoning ordinance in place, which started in 1989. A petition has also been filed from the neighbors supporting this special use. A public hearing was held where no objections were heard, but one comment of support came from Larry Young. Following the hearing, the PZC recommended unanimously to approve the special use permit request. The petitioner will be present to answer any questions. Any questions? Here. This is kind of a no brainer one. <laughs> I, would, <coughs> so, I would like to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1273, granting a special use permit for two accessory structures on one zoning lot at 607 Penfield Street. Second. There's a motion down the floor and there was a second. Any questions to the motion? Welcome. Wayland? Yes. Burroughs? Yes. Missouri? Yes. House? Yes. yes. Meyer? Yes. Basil? Yes. Chris Burroughs? Consider a motion approving a contract with Baxter and Woman Engineers to provide construction management services for the wastewater treatment plant project in the amount not to exceed $628,000. Um, this contract needs to be approved before the IEPA will issue a loan for the project and ensures that an engineer will certify that plant will be built in to design standards. Um, of course, none of the funding will be spent until the village uh, begins the projects and uh, the loans are secured. So. Um, basically, this was this was in the, the the dollar amount since day one. Since we've been looking at the wastewater treatment plant, it's construction observation, construction management of the job, um, and the handling of everything through the bid process, the contracting, figuring out um, low bid, and and executing that, and to the job finished and the plant up and running. And that also includes time after the plant is up and running, making sure. All the bugs are worked out, staff is trained, so on and so forth. Um, this is no surprise, it's been in there since day one, so I'll make a motion uh, approving a contract with Baxter and Women Engineers to provide construction management services for the wastewater treatment plant project uh, in an amount not to exceed $628,000. Second. There's a motion number four, and there was a second. Any questions to the motion? Roll call. Basil? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Krause? Yes. Missouri? Yes. 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 Uh, consider a motion approving payment of an invoice for Brant excavating for Penfield uh, water main replacement upon receipt of the IEPA loan funds. Um, we'll have the exact amount of this invoice. Uh, it's going to be carried from 226 to 227. We received a 288 today from EPA as reimbursement from the first payment. So now we have the funds available. Okay. What, do, what, do you, what do you expect the final? Not to exceed 227. I think it's 226 and change. Make it not to exceed 228. Why don't we make it not to exceed 230 to be That's safe? Yeah, I haven't seen the actual no. invoice yet. I saw it. Rather than guessing, guessing at numbers. Yes, from the first one. Um, this is all done. I, I think the water main replacement went well. Um, there wasn't all 
a lot of issues. Um, I think it was done pretty quick too. Um, from what I understand is as of today, everything east of the bridge is up and running onto the new mains, everything, old yeah. service lines, everything is abandoned, the old water main. Um, and west will be finished shortly and the paving company is scheduled for Monday the 21st. Actually, they'll be in here Wednesday or Thursday, weather permitting. If it's just sprinkling, they're going to go. If well, not, they'll definitely the, be here Monday. The email I got is they, their plans are to begin on Monday the 21st, so that's what I will report, is that they will okay. hopefully be beginning weather permitting on the 21st. If something happens before then. Surprise. He's getting, Surprise. He's getting the engineer he had reports. Um, oh. So, other than that, I mean, it went well, I understand now, after... A month of month and a half of constant beating because this all began right after the Fourth of July, but or right before the Fourth of July. But um, it's like a war zone driving down Penfield right now. But hopefully within a week and a half's time, it'll be smooth sailing. Smooth the old maiden did not boss either drink. Yes, which, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was it was done. The job was done well. So uh, I, kudos to Brand Excavating. So I will make a motion. Uh, approving payment of an invoice for Brandt Excavating for the Penfield Water Main replacement upon the receipt of the IEPA loans, which we have received, um, not to exceed two hundred thirty thousand dollars. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any questions or motion? Yeah, this final payment. There's not. There's not, not going to be a final payment. Not it's final. done. It's a progress payment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question. Did I say final in the motion? No. No, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Roll call. Whalen? Yes. Cabros? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Grouse? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Basil? Yes. Any old business to come before the board? New business. I, I just want to, if you notice, we'd be right over it. The variance reports are being presented to you differently now. I see we're software upgrade uh, with the general ledger system. Yeah, we are in the process of eliminating QuickBooks from our system, is that correct? And that required yes. us to upgrade our Google Maps software. So you're seeing a new layout of these reports, which is more standard uh, in the industry. It'll be a few months before that actually happens. Uh, but right now it's, you know, a lot of duplicated work. So we're, we're trying to eliminate that. That's it. So motion will adjourn. Oh, you know, I, I have one little thing. Um, I passed out um, in the uh, water billing software, we went um, with a new module, which is going to allow us to email everyone their water bill. Um, we've got it up and, and we hope running properly. Uh, but what I'd like to do with the September bill, if, if anybody in here would like their water bill emailed to them, you know, we can talk afterwards and you can give me your email. I just want to do like a soft uh, with this, make sure everybody's getting what they're supposed to before I put it out to, to everyone. Um, but this is, what's going to happen is um, <coughs> you give me your email, your water bill is going to come across uh, to you as an attachment and it's going to just look like that. Um, we've had a lot of people, I, I've mentioned it to a few people that, you know, this is going to, something that's going to happen. Super excited. Everybody gets everything emailed to them now. Um, it will also be a cost savings to us. Because right now, um, it costs us with printing the water bill, mailing it out, it costs about 33 cents per bill to mail it out. A lot of people lose them, they get misplaced. Um, if I can get 40% participation from the residents for emailing, um, that's about 670 people. It will cost five cents uh, to mail out their email out their water bill, and that that five cents is because of our um, 200 year, 200 dollars a year maintenance fee for the the module. But um, we can also use their email with their permission for other official village business, like emailing the newsletter twice a year. So we can use it uh, in that respect as well. Um, at the same time, I'm also going to ask people if they want to sign up for auto draft. 
which we currently have 148 residents that utilize that. But it will, um, you know, let them go completely paperless. They're not writing checks. They're not having to run in here. Um, on the due date, I withdraw the, the that amount directly from your checking account. There's never a late fee, never a missed payment. Um, works out great for a lot of people. So, um, again, if anybody wants to participate. With that being said, I think um, I'll have a committee meeting and see if there's some sort of incentive program we can come up with um, to create some sort of incentive for residents to sign up for the paperless billing and for the auto draft maybe if we do something where if they sign up for both as a package um, that's going to save a lot of time on our front desk um, accepting the water bills you know um, of the I mean if you got 1600 customers and you got 148 I mean yes some mail it in but I know there's still a large portion of them that still come to the window or go through the drive up um, if there's some way we can incentivize them um, to do this and we can save money on sending out bills and taking them in and running to the bank and running to the post office and everything and make the staff more efficient um, we'll look into that so I'll plan on having a committee meeting and seeing what we can come up with on that end okay. that'll promote this I have an item. Uh, I was at a, I was at a postmaster convention, and one of the new things that they rolled out to the public, uh, which I was un unaware of, and I probably 90% of the postmasters there were were unaware of it. It's called Inform Delivery. Um, you go on USPS.com, click on the Inform Delivery, and what it does is it'll send you a picture of first class mail that's going to be delivered that day to your box or your home. So you go on, you sign up, and just follow the instructions on USPS.com, and um, the pictures come of the first class mail. I think the businesses could probably really uh, use that, and I have residents too. Like today, I had two bills in there, <laughs> and uh, they were there. So uh, I thought it was pretty neat. I just wanted to throw that out there. I had a resident, uh, actually a couple of residents asked me the other day about, they're just talking about business and stuff in here, and they're asking, besides the boardwalk, what is our village doing? And I don't know if I plan to, if it's plan zoning, if it's odd, if it's economic development, but I honestly didn't have an answer for them. And they asked about, you know, the building over there where Lacey's is that it got triple divided and then it's empty. They're like, why? I said, I don't know. But some, I mean, some things occur that are outside the village's control. Um, that owner decided to do that to that building, so we had a nice setup for a family restaurant there that's now converted to a three-unit strip mall, basically. That's the answer there. It had nothing to do with the village there. Um, and that was a difficult process. In that particular case, so unless I mistake when that building prevent runs out, then it's very possible he's in violation of code because of the current that one window. So maybe something can be done about that. Okay. And as far as what enticing and economic development we've offered in Senate before, we have inquiries. I had an inquiry about the old Aurelio building. Uh, we've reached out. And I'm not sure what more is expected of us to try and reach out and try and lure us. Bottom line is somebody has to be interested in locating a franchise here lots of times. They have to be interested in opening up the business. I had an inquiry over another liquor store, which hopefully the guy never called me back, which thank God, because I don't think we need another package liquor store. Our housing market has to improve before we can attract new commercial. Uh, when you have a housing stock that's stagnant for 10 years and it has been, uh, there's no new market base to attract for new business, and that's hard. So housing and commercial run hand in hand. So we need that house, we need new, new, new homes, is what we need. We've offered incentives for the homes, and we have old offices and then talking code. Were you, know. were you planning on doing another? I think you mentioned it like a couple months ago that you'd like to do another strategy planning. That's what like, yeah, that's the war and that they were trying to trust these. Yeah. What is, I'm sorry, I just think that'd be a chance for them to correct. That, that's that's what 
the strategic planning that Bob's working on, whether we hire a company or whether Bob does it, therefore then you would be able to, especially the trustees that have not attended it, begin your input on what we should be like in the future, what we should be doing, and so on and so forth. And that's that's for it. And you have senior you're housing you're working on right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, remember, I didn't mention that. Yeah, we're we're sure. trying to track the okay. senior housing. That, I talked to a gentleman today who's coming out to take a look around, and I have another one that acknowledged the letter, so it's, we're getting there. Um, what I this is just me and this would come up with strategic planning. I always try to look for something different, something that we can draw, something that's unique for us because we have basics. So we need something different that maybe somebody else doesn't have or it's not very popular area. One of the things, if you if you go to the convention, go to some of the economic development seminars that are there, and you, I think you'll begin to understand that what we've looked at the companies before, what was the name of the company? I don't remember which trustee went there for that one. Boston. Buxton. Buxton. We had Buxton come out, Marcy was you, mm -hmm. come out, talk to us, and so on and so forth. And I think you would agree it's not as easy as individuals would think to bring, let's say, a Dunkin' Donuts, which I'd love to have, you'd probably love to have, being a furious people, you know, because the coffee, not because the donuts, because the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't the, we don't need the targets, you don't need the restrictions. Traffic many, going past, how, how many, many cars, residents how many they want to consider it. I mean, I've not even income. talked to at IML, the guy that decides to work for Walgreens, okay, and try to talk to him while they're facing the we just don't meet the criteria. But then I don't want to also lure businesses that will put our other businesses that have been loyal to us out of business. So there has to be a check and balance there as far as you know, what we have. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. But anything else? I will give a sewer plan update at the next week. Oh, I'll use two weeks. Fine, John. Yeah. Are we sure there's nothing else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> motion made by <laughs> Senate. <laughs> Question to that one? Roll call. Basil? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Krauss? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Krauss? Yes. Wayland? Yes.